welcome back to the Extension Office Kitchen. Um, once again, I'm Tiffany Calvert, the County Extension Agent for Family Consumer Sciences. And with me today, tell them your name. Talon. And I'm How old are you, Talon? Seven. Seven years old. And so this is going to feel real natural to us because this is the type of thing that we do at home. Um, Talon is my oldest son who is seven and he helps me a lot in the kitchen. And so he has ever since he was able to. I'll never forget the first time that Talon had a knife and was standing, <laughs> standing in his stool in our kitchen um, using appropriate knife skills and was cutting up some fruit and his daddy walked in and said, <gasps> he's got a knife. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I'm well aware he's been doing this um, ever since he can remember. And so we are going to do a lesson for you today on jars. This is part of the OC Healthy Recipe um, videos. And so I am going to be preparing a few recipes today, but it's mainly just about jars. Jars in uh, my house was a game changer when it comes to eating healthy. Um, and they just make things so much easier. So, Talon, which one does mommy prefer? Plastic or glass? Glass. Glass. And everything mommy puts in your lunchbox is what? Glass. Glass. What did I put in your lunchbox today to drink? Water. Water. Do you like it when mommy puts lemon in your water? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so as far as beverages go, I believe this is considered a pint and a half. But if you look at the jar, the jar is even from the mouth to the bottom. This particular jar is best for beverages because it fits in your cup holder in your vehicle. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've had one to fall over and leak out in the, in the truck or it always rolls into the very far side where you can't reach it. Um, but these fit inside a cup holder. You can purchase, um, and Ball puts this out, lids and straws to actually make it into a drink. And then this is the ring, and this is considered a wide mouth jar. And it just screws on and holds your lid on tight like that. If you don't have these, that's perfectly fine. You can still drink out of your jar just fine. You can use the two-piece lid that it comes with, your flat and your ring, or you can buy these plastic lids, which is what I prefer and use a lot of, and there you go. You can take it to go. Um, I generally like to buy freezer-safe jars just because I do um, a lot of smoothies. And when I make smoothies, I always make more than enough. I make the one that I'm taking with me that morning, and then I also take two or three to freeze. Um, and so planning ahead and having things on hand that's healthy and ready to eat is the key. Um, and so they all, I've also found this little guy, which is also put out by Ball. Um, and most of these are found in the canning section in your stores where the jars are located. This is a infuser where you can flavor your water. So you just put your fruit or whatever down, your vegetables, cucumber, herbs, mint, down in this little thing and then you screw it up just like that. And this would be for the people who would not like to drink whatever you're flavoring your water with. I don't mind it. I usually just leave it floating around in there, and if I drink it, I drink it. Um, but that, and then it has a little hole on top where you can drink your water or your tea. You know, Grammy puts women in her tea a lot, right? Yeah. So it can actually be to infuse your tea. So the next size jar that I wanted to talk about is just your regular pint size jars. And this is what we're going to be layering two different salads, a regular like tossed salad and then a pasta salad in. And then we even have smaller jars, your, your jelly jar. Um, do you see any of the tiny jars, Talon? And then an even smaller jelly jar, and sometimes mama puts salsa in your lunchbox, and it makes um, a great jar to dip things out of. 
or I'll put peanut butter in there and then I'll pack him an apple and then he's got peanut butter to dip in with his apple. These plastic lids fit regular mouth or your wide mouth. And of course they have all different colors of jars if you just wanted to get real fancy and creative. I personally like the clear jars just because they're pretty. You can see your food right inside there. So this is trail mix and I, I prefer to make my own trail mix just because I don't like the trail mixes in the store because they typically already have a seasoning on them or extra sodium that's unnecessary and I save a lot of money by making my own. So I just get our favorite mixture of nuts, peanuts, cashews, almonds. Almonds are really good. Pecans, um, and then dried fruit is really good to put in trail mix. Cranberries, huh? Raisins. Somebody likes raisins. Um, and then pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds. And then for an extra treat, we can have some dark chocolate chunks, right? Just a few of those for an extra little um, dessert snack in a lunchbox. So having, making your own trail mix is saving you a lot of time and storing them in jars makes them ready to go, easy to snack on, um, easy to pack up in your lunch. It's just for on the go, for busy people. Um, and I know we have a lot of busy, busy people out there. So this idea came off of Pinterest. This is a wide mouth jar. And this is a applesauce cup. And so after we eat the applesauce cup, we're actually gonna wash it out and save it. And now that opens up a whole new world of what we could do. So like I talked about before, if you wanted to pack crackers and peanut butter, what you can do is actually, and I don't have a smaller wide mouth jar, but if I did, you would put your peanut butter in your jar and then, or you could put your crackers. That would work better if you put your crackers in the jar and then you're gonna use your flat. You're gonna turn that upside down and you could put your peanut butter up here and then you're gonna screw that on and it's gonna stay with it. And so you have an all-in-one snack. Um, I've also prepared my yogurt you know, they make yogurt in the individual to-go cups already, but they can be a little bit pricier. So if you purchase the larger yogurt, and I just like plain yogurt, and I like to mix in my local honey um, just to sweeten it with. And so, and then I've also added vanilla flavoring, my own vanilla flavoring into my yogurt. So I can go ahead and have that mixed up in my jar. And then my granola that I would put on top of it goes up here. So your granola is not sitting there getting all soggy and this is in the fridge ready to grab and go the next morning so it makes a really quick and easy breakfast so yogurt salsa peanut butter can you think of anything else that mommy puts in jars um, our drinks we do unsweetened tea we do uh, lemon water I put raisins, sometimes we just do raisins by themselves, um, fruit by themselves, and actually what we're putting together today is for our family. So we are um, killing two birds with one stone today. And so um, on the cutting board I have some fruit that we are going to cut up, and I have, well you tell me, what is this, do you know? Grapefruit? Grapefruit! I figured you were going to say an orange. That's pretty good. What's this? Kiwi. Kiwi. What's this? Pear. Close. Mm. It's got that big seed in the middle and it starts with a mmm. Mm. Mango. 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 You like mango. We don't have it too often, but... So, to prepare for the jars, Really, I just, there's no secret on how to cut it, how to prepare it. I just chop it up. And this grapefruit is kind of juicy, and so, you know, I would just pull this out of a jar and eat it at work just like that. So I'm not going to chop it any smaller and risk losing any of that really good juice. And as 
far as your fruit, I mix my fruit a lot of times. Remember, I'm big on eating a variety of color. So I got my, my red grapefruit down in there. I bet you want a piece of this, right? Yeah, somebody just come, <laughs> come home from school and uh, you know how they are. As soon as they hit the door, they're hungry. So that is for you. You can snack on that. And I think the rest of it's going to fit in the jar. It's usually a war at my house if there's only one plate of kiwi because we need to learn to share a little bit better, right? Mm -hmm. Share and care for baby brother. And I'm sure I'm not the only house like this, but the reason my jars is such a game changer is I do this ahead of time, most of the time on a Sunday evening. Um, it keeps for the week, the five-day working week, and, um, you know, more fruit and more vegetables are being consumed in my home because they're already washed, chopped, and ready to go. And so what I would do is I'd put a wide mouth lid on that and store it in my refrigerator. And look how pretty that is. And when my kids open the refrigerator and they see this ready, that's what they grab. They're not even asking for the chips, the cookies, all that. They would prefer to have this because it's ready to go. So let's go ahead and chop up this mango. If you're not familiar with a mango, I may need a smaller knife. Can you see more? Just for camera's sake. I don't want you to cut yourself open on camera. I know, but... Um, there is a gigantic seed inside of a mango, and if you've never cut one open, you just need to be aware of that, because you are not going to cut into that seed. It is rock solid, but what you're going to do is you're just going to keep chunking away at it. I should have peeled it first, Alan. Maybe I should have let you do this. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's peel it. Yes, you have. You've peeled your own apples before, after I've cut it up before. And, I don't know, have you peeled your kiwi before? Have I let you do that before? Mm, I think so. I usually, I mean, uh, try to get, you know, age appropriate, make sure that your young ones know appropriate knife skills. Um, mangoes are large and they're kind of slimy and slick and hard to handle. So um, I would prefer to cut the skin off. I would prefer to get it off of the seed. And then once it's down on the chopping board, if he, you know, if you had a younger child to cut it up in smaller pieces. Mangoes are really, really soft. So even my three-year-old, I would feel comfortable giving him um, a plastic butter knife and just allowing him to chop it up. Now, the more help you have in the kitchen with children, the more likely you are to be able to like stand here longer and chop more because they're gonna be eating it as they are chopping it, but that's okay. It's completely healthy. I would, uh, yeah, you can cut that into smaller pieces. I'll give you that knife. Okay. Let's put it in this jar, okay? So fingers out of the way. Put it in the jar once you get it to the size you want. I've always said healthy habits start early and the more children are in the kitchen helping you prepare the food, the more likely they are to eat it. So when I get this trimmed down, you're gonna be able to see that seed in the center. And like I said, you can definitely fill it with your knife because you are not going to be able to cut it. You're just going to have to trim away. It's white and it's rock hard. And I just get as close as I can. I don't like to be wasteful, but this is really hard to hang on to. And you don't want to lose a finger just trying to get 
a fourth of an inch of a piece of mango off. And the seed is pretty big, so there you go. That's about as close as I'm going to get it. How are you coming over there? Good. Good. Slow go. It's a slow go, isn't it? Well, when you're working with a knife, you want to make sure it's a slow go. You can put a little bit bigger pieces in there. Whatever you, you like to eat, you're the one that's going to be eating it in your lunch. That's why I want it small. Oh, okay. You just like to eat it with a spoon? Pretty much. So, once again, I would much prefer to have my children eat fresh fruit. That's the reason why I chop it and wash it ahead of time and put it into jars. But um, I do keep the fruit cups on hand, but they are pricier. And so I just usually generally have those for emergencies. And just in case we get a busy weekend and haven't had a chance to prep our food like we want to. Can I eat this piece? Yeah. Is that okay with you? I want to eat it. Okay. You give it a try. Is it pretty good? Mm -hmm. All right. Fill it up and that's ready to go. All right. Next, we're going to make a pasta salad. And I've already got my pre cooked noodles in here. And just noodles of your choice. Um, you can do whole wheat noodles, you can do the, the rainbow colored noodles, you can um, zeti, panini whatever kind of pasta you would prefer um, to put in here. And then I already have some pre-cooked quinoa. Can you say that? Quinoa. Quinoa. Very good. Um, and this is a red quinoa. And um, what the package says is that um, in order to prepare it, what you're going to do is you're going to boil your water and then it's got directions right here on the back. And then you're just going to make sure it's kind of like dry beans. You've got to rinse it really well. So you need a fine mesh strainer to do that. And you see where I put my strainer? Just make sure it's a really fine mesh strainer because these are tiny. And then it's going to tell you how long to boil it. But in order to tell if quinoa is uh, finished cooking or not, is you want to make sure that it's busting open, okay? So these little kernels will bust open and you'll see the white interior part. So this is definitely finished and I've allowed this to cool because this is going to be a cold pasta salad. Now, quinoa is high in fiber, it's very nutritious, and you can do this in place of rice Pasta, you could throw it in stir fry, casseroles, um, cold pasta salads. Um, generally, we use it in pasta salad, and I have made a salad just using quinoa and no pasta. So uh, I would just use the quinoa, the chop, the chopped bell peppers, um, cucumbers, and onions, and then I've made my own dressing, like a, a, a honey vinaigrette dressing, to put with it. Now, I'm not going to put all of this in here. I'm going to save some of this for probably stir fry night because I picked up some stir fry noodles. So it's going to make, this is just going to be extremely colorful. So I'm going to add some cucumbers, some carrots, some tomatoes. Do you know what this yellow thing is? bell peppers, you were correct. It's very, very colorful. Do you think you can stir that up and throw them in everywhere? Maybe? Okay. Yeah. We'll see. And so, once again, I'm going to uh, tell you that eating a colorful salad is much more nutritious because you are getting a variety of nutrients. Each, each color of vegetables is going to offer a different nutrient. And so the dressing, we're just going to add some Italian dressing and let that marinate a little bit. Maybe easier to stir, but go ahead and put this in here. 
The amount of dressing is really up to you. If I had to guess, I probably added a little over a half a cup just then. All right, let me see if I can dig down to the bottom. Find those noodles. Look how pretty that looks. I know some people really prefer um, the cheese seeds. Throw those in there if you would like. Not everyone in my family likes green onions, um, so I have left those out, but feel free to add those in there. Any vegetable works in this. I've, I've added broccoli, I've added cauliflower, whatever you have on hand, really. All right. And so what we would do then is we would just layer them into our jars. And for pasta salad, I usually add that into a lunch with a sandwich. And so I usually prefer the jelly jars, the smaller jar. And we'll just put that in there. And I'm telling you guys, my refrigerator on a Sunday afternoon after meal prepping looks amazing. It looks gorgeous. It's colorful. It's just, it's pretty. And it's satisfying and you just feel so accomplished to know that you've got ready-to-go meals in the refrigerator and you're going to be eating healthier. So there we go. There's your pasta salad. And this is going to make several jars. Um, but when we have three people in my home that packs lunches, um, this will probably be right at enough for our five days if we store them in the smaller jars. All right, I'm gonna set that to the side. And the last thing that I wanna show you is how to layer a salad to get it to last five days without going bad. And there is a trick to that, okay? And so when we think about layering salads in jars, totally omit the idea of adding your dressing, okay? We don't wanna do that until we are ready to eat our salad. And just, a little bit of a learning curve when I started doing this because I was thinking, man, I really want a big salad because a salad is all I'm going to eat for lunch. And I started with a quart jar, way too big, okay, way, way too big because you are going to be amazed at how big a salad can be when you're layering it into a pint jar. It's going to be huge, okay? So we want to wash and chop our vegetables for our salad, any kind of vegetables that you would like, um, and you wanna make sure that you dry them as much as possible. So you can see that the vegetables that I have laying out here have been air drying for a while. The drier, the better. That is the absolute number one key when it comes to getting these salads to last five days in the fridge, okay? You also want to forget about adding croutons or nuts because they just they do weird stuff, okay? And you're not going to be satisfied. If you were going to absolutely need croutons or nuts or seeds in your salad, go with this idea. Put them on top, separate from all the other vegetables in your salad. Okay, so we're going to start with our hard vegetables first. And so whether you get the matchstick carrots, or um, typically I, I usually just have the whole carrots in my home and when I'm preparing this for a salad, uh, a vegetable peeler, a, ve a vegetable peeler um, works wonders. You just peel it as if you were peeling the skin off and preparing it. And then you have these nice little strips of carrots that are absolutely perfect for a salad. So a vegetable peeler can be um, pretty handy when it comes to making a salad. You can do that, but to save us time, why don't you go ahead and put a few carrots in the bottom of this jar. Okay? There we go. Okay. Let's put a few more. Two. Alright. 
Then our next hardest vegetable would probably be our bell peppers. All right, you want to pick which colors? Let's do a little bit of all of them. Okay, put the bell peppers in there next. There we go. Let's put some more. Put some more yellows. There we go. That's probably enough. Throw in just a few cucumbers. All right. Now, let's do some spinach. So, pack your spinach in there. You do like spinach smoothies. Sometimes. You do like them. Yeah. You drink them more often than you think you're drinking them. Spinach can be hidden in just about any dish or any drink. Um, a smoothie turns out with spinach in it turns out to be extremely green, but I can make them taste exactly like pineapple. If you add just a little bit of pineapple, it completely covers the spinach taste. So we uh, we drink a lot of spinach smoothies in our home. I mean pineapple smoothies in our home. Don't we? I have a problem. You like pineapple ones. Yeah. yeah. And so when you're adding the greens, you're just going to, once again, make sure that they're really, really dry. And you're just going to pack it in there. So layering salads in a jar is not necessarily meant to be eaten out of the jar. Um, so you'll want to, if you're packing it for your lunch, you will want to grab a big bowl to dump it out in. That way you can incorporate all your vegetables, get it good mixed up, and add your croutons or add your salad dressing at that point. Um, if you're really trying to cut back on calories or just your dressing, I would highly suggest that when you're eating it to have your dressing on the side and rather than pouring it over top of your salad because we all know where it goes completely to the bottom um, dip your fork in the dressing and then get a bite of salad onto your fork and eat it that way and i think you'll be really surprised about that's good enough we need to save room for our tomatoes and I think you'll be really surprised at the amount of dressing that you use when you eat a salad that way because you hardly use any at all. Yeah, so you can cut the tomatoes. Cut them in half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fingers out of the way. There we go. There we go. And we're going to cut them in quarters. Cut them in half again. Flip it over so it don't roll on you. And so our softer, more delicate vegetables are going to go right in there on top. And while he's cutting those, I'm going to go ahead and cut a mushroom. Now mushrooms, I know um, you, most people either really hate them or really love them. And I really love them. So we're going to put our tomato and our mushrooms right on top. This would be also, you didn't cut yourself, did you? No. Uh-oh, <laughs> lost it. Oh, it's puking, seeds everywhere. That one has an extra. Yep. Throw our mushrooms right in there on top. Another salad that I like to make um, is when I add black beans, I like to make a, a dressing using uh, a healthier ranch dressing with some taco seasoning. And for those salads, I put black beans in there. I simply just wash them, strain them, let them air dry, and the beans would be considered a soft um, vegetable, so they would go right there on top. And so that is your salad, and it is layered up, very colorful, and ready to go. So if you happen to be layering your salad and at the end of it you see a lot of like moisture in the bottom and it's kind of running and you just want to have to dump it back out and try again because if you have moisture, the more moisture you have, the quicker it's going to go bad. And so I hope that this will make um, it easier for you through the work week. Um, I know being busy is the hardest thing to overcome when it comes to eating healthier. 
And so this is what works for me and my family. And if you have any questions, let us know. And I hope you try some of these. Thank you.